Yeah. Okay, we're ready to get started. This is designed to have you in and out in an hour, and, and we're not going to do that. Is anybody in a big hurry? No. It's a miserable day. You're, you're with friends having good food. You get more coffee. There's Danish. So relax and, and enjoy our program. I'm Peter Heilman, uh, our executive director. Uh, and I, I have the uh, privilege of giving a brief uh, overview of our ministry. I'm a Bucks County trial lawyer. I married a country girl who loves horses, Wendy. We raised our four kids, two of whom are here, Jesse and Sarah, uh, on a 10-acre horse farm north of Doylestown. I could not have imagined a scenario that would have caused us to move to the city to work and go to church at Hunting Park, North Philadelphia. We are not city people. But Jesus comes to each of us and says, follow me. He led me to a treasure in this ministry designed to address poverty and injustice in our inner cities, his way through his people. It's called Christian Legal Aid. We are one of 63 Christian Legal Aid clinics across the country which follow the same word deed model that has worked for over 40 years, seeking to do justice with the love of God. We all met in Boston last month, which helped renew my vision for this work. Christian lawyers partner with host ministries already changing lives in the inner city, bringing legal resources where they are needed most. As Dennis told you already, uh, how this all started, for me, I was part of a handful of lawyers who came to a seminar Dennis invited us to uh, 13 years ago, when the head of the Christian Legal Society challenged us to start a legal clinic here in Philadelphia. A group spun off from that uh, initial site and opened a second clinic in Hunting Park, which I became involved in. We formed a board which had a citywide multi-clinic vision, but remained all volunteer with no staff, no office, and no effective plan to accomplish the vision. Three years ago, we agreed that we needed to do more, and we adopted an ambitious five-year plan to become the first faith-based legal nonprofit in the area, with an office and staff that could build an infrastructure to support five clinics in the neediest neighborhoods in the city, each with their own embedded attorney. We offer clients a free one-hour consultation where volunteer attorneys meet one-on-one -on -one with people who are often very different from them. We call them divine appointments. Yes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and there can be a very special connection that results. People come off the street with all kinds of legal issues. Uh, family, criminal, housing, immigration, uh, and we help start a lot of nonprofits. We listen to their story and help them think through their situation and offer options. If they qualify for further help, we'll refer them to someone on our panel of referral attorneys or take the case ourselves. Before they leave, we ask, how can we pray for you? Having a lawyer offer prayer always surprises them. And it often opens the door for us to address more personal and spiritual issues that enable the Holy Spirit to effect real change. It changes our lawyers, too, as we ask them to come outside their comfort zone and put their faith into practice. And they get to meet some very special people. We also have many non-attorney volunteers who help in a variety of ways. We see very real injustices that the poor suffer simply because they can't afford an attorney. They need someone to stand in the gap for them. Our goal is to offer them gospel justice. We're helping people not by giving them a handout, but by giving them wise counsel and representation. We work one family at a time to help resolve some of the difficult issues that can keep people trapped in poverty. I'm feeling great today. Yes. <laughs> But last year at this time when I stood up to talk, I felt horrible. Um, I had just finished the 10th of 12 chemotherapy treatments for appendix cancer. Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of that week, I carried a chemo bag around that effused poison throughout my body. As I spoke, I could feel its toxic effect in every finger and every toe. 
But God's Spirit lifted me, strengthened me, and somehow I yeah. got through it. Yeah. Life brings hard times and challenges to all of us. We will all be weak and in need of help eventually. This week, Wendy and I came this close to buying a house in Hunting Park. We really want to experience the Christian community there and to live, work, and worship in the same neighborhood. But we decided it would be too hard for us. The threat of crime and violence is very stressful. But that's the only home most of our clients have ever known. They've had to deal with the toxic street culture that poisons lives and leaves many with symptoms similar to post-traumatic stress. They have to deal with the scourge of drugs every day. But there is also a precious faith that rises from the struggle on those streets, Amen. one which gets tested every day. Many living there have learned to trust Jesus in ways I will never know. Sharing that vibrant faith is the beauty of this ministry and why it is so powerful. Those who have hope can offer help to those who are stricken. Amen. People aren't changed by a one-hour legal consultation, but they can be changed by an encounter with Jesus and an invitation to a community of grace yes. in their own neighborhood. You see, all we do is bring lawyers, volunteers, and clients together in that place. We see our clinics as lighthouses, drawing those with legal needs to a place where they can find help and hope. Once there, we can be a bridge to them, a bridge to Jesus and to the resources they need. We are the body of Christ, living out its role in the community. Since we opened our office two years ago, we've experienced dramatic growth. We now have those five clinics in North, South, and West Philadelphia and Chester, and plan to open clinics this spring in Germantown and Kensington. That handful of attorneys has grown to a five-county network of volunteer clinic attorneys and referral attorneys. This year, we've helped over 500 people, more than twice as many as we saw three years ago. That could easily grow to over 1,000 a year. Last year, we put on 15 community legal education seminars. We've majored in writing wills and expungements and have had special clinics at the Homeless Ministry and Senior Citizen Center. This year, we've cleared the arrest records of 50 men and women. We love it when we call and ask them how they're doing and find out they're at work. We can see Jesus sending lawyers out two by two to any number of clinic sites, wherever he calls them, wherever a vibrant work of the gospel is going on wherever our clients would be well cared for. We'd like to set up a regional law office to work on the cases that come from the clinics in that region of the city. We can see ourselves being right smack in the middle of a revival as we work together to build a community of justice made up of all churches and all races in the city and the suburbs working together. It seems crazy, uh, but we believe nothing is impossible with God. And after all, He has called us to do this. We're here today to ask you to join us in some way. There are nearly 200 people here, and I know that you've come because you want to help. Amen. You may be thinking, I'm not a lawyer, uh. or I'm not about to come to West Philly. Mercy, have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Some are called to help in that way, and some are not. But scripture is clear that we are all called to fight injustice Amen. and address the needs of the poor, not just lawyers. We realize that we are not going to accomplish the great vision Jesus has for us without help from Amen. people like you. Amen. Some may be thinking, this is a fundraiser and I'm not planning to give any funds. Uh. We understand that. Please don't feel bad about it. Uh, you have gifts that are of more value to us than money. Amen. My battle with cancer and Wendy's with Parkinson's disease mm -hmm. has made it clear to us that our time is short. We need to make our lives count. Mm -hmm. Our faith has been tested through hard times, and in our weakness, we've been forced to trust Jesus more. Yeah. We want to spend what time we have left doing things that build heavenly treasures. Yes, sir. Jesus tells us what, that whatever we do for the least of his brothers, we do for him. I believe he's telling us in that parable that he is actually present with us whenever we help someone in need. Amen. We know what it's like to be that someone. 
Thanks for coming. Thanks for listening. We really appreciate every one of you. Now for, we have a special treat for you. We're going to unveil Tim Fryatt's second video. <laughs> Tim, are you here? Yeah. He's here because he delivered the video to us. Tim tells two stories of how our representation made the difference in the lives of two of our struggling clients. The first is a teenager whose family came to this country illegally when he was a child. Daniel Colbert filed a, filed a DACA application for him with the immigration office that enabled him to get into his dream school. Now you may think, what the heck is DACA? Well, you'll, you'll learn what DACA is. I said that once. The second uh, is a story about an older woman, no longer a teenager, whose adult son was arrested for selling drugs out of her home, and we were able to save her house from being forfeited to the state. As you watch, imagine what it would be like if God's kingdom were to come to earth here in Philadelphia, as it is in heaven. So you even have Tim to queue up a video. Now, how many banquets have the videographer queuing up the video? Well, well, how could anything go wrong? What's the, what's the one thing that always goes wrong at these banquets? The video! Yeah. Right. <laughs> Can we turn the lights? 